Hello, this is the Linux Gamer back with another Chrome OS video. So this one's going to be about installing KSP on your Chromebook. And immediately I'm going to make the disclaimers. One, this requires you to put your computer into dev mode. So if you want to avoid that and any possible extra vulnerabilities that could come with that, stop now. This will involve installing Linux in a CRUT on your computer. If you think that you might get malware in this CRUT that could potentially affect your Chrome OS system, don't do this. And third, I cannot guarantee that you will have any good level of performance, especially if you play with mods. Anyway, now with the disclaimers out of the way, as I said, you'll have to be in dev mode so you can access the bash shell in the crosh. So there's a command we need to find. I have it in here somewhere. This actually isn't required, but this one just makes it so that you whoops, uh, boot past the dev mode screen faster, which I would say is a good thing. It means you don't have to press control D every time. It's especially helpful if you say have family members who might press the space bar out of habit, which has happened to me before when I still used Chromebooks. Anyway, now that's out of the way, we have to get something called Crouton. You can find it in GitHub, search up Crouton Chromebook or Chromebook Crouton or even just Crouton and you will find it. And it has some very, very helpful instructions on how to do this. Anyway, you have to press this link to download, I've already done that, and then you have to run this command, sudo install minus capital D T slash USR slash local slash bin minus M755 tiled slash downloads slash crouton or wherever you save crouton. And then you can use sudo crouton to run it. Anyway, I've also already done all that and I'll link the GitHub page in the description. In fact, I'll also link a page in the description for how to turn on dev mode, since I didn't tell you how to do that, did I? And I'm not going to, since it's not something I can screen record. Anyway, I'm just going to show you. This is the command I used to install Linux for this Chromebook. So sudo, cr sudo crouton, which obviously runs the script, minus r is the release, and I chose Bionic. I actually reverted to Xenial because it's better supported, even though it's a little older, and then minus T for targets, and you want XFCE, because that's a pretty good desktop environment for this, and Zorg, which just improves performance with the X Windows server. Anyway, I've already done that. So to enter the crew, you'll need to type sudo start xfce4. Now I can't actually record the crew with this screen recorder from Chrome OS, so I'll just start resume the recording with simple screen recorder when I am in the crew. Okay, I'm back and now I'm in the crew. Just a quick word of advice, uh, these volumes are related to Chrome OS, please do not attempt to delete them or screw with their mounting or anything. Just going to point that out, just leave this stuff alone. Anyway, the next thing we have to do is open our terminal and run sudo apt install steam. If you have the GOG version, you can just go to the GOG.com website. I would recommend doing this in Chrome and saving it to the downloads folder because that is a shared folder. Anyway, enter the password you set when you were setting up Crouton, and it will give you the information, and say yes to it installing. Or you could use the minus Y option on the command, that works too. And this will take some time to download and install everything, but it's reasonably fast. In this case, it has to install a bunch of drivers because the version of Linux that is installed in the Crout by Crouton is very minimal because, well, Chromebooks don't exactly have much storage. For instance, Linux Mint, which is the Linux distro I use on my actual laptop that I use for most things, that's like 10-15 gigabytes out of the box, so obviously they had to pare this down to something a lot smaller, so it doesn't come with these drivers by default, for instance. And I'll have this, just press tab to hit OK, 
and arrow keys to I agree, then tap to I to OK, and press Enter. And just wait for it to finish installing this stuff. I guess I don't have much to talk about in the meantime, but it'll it'll be done pretty fast. Of course, I'll provide a lot of helpful links in the description because I'm not good at explaining things and there were some things I couldn't or did not want to record for this video. Oh, and there we go. So we can close that now and run program Steam. Yeah, you can see I've already installed KSP at one point and then deleted it so I can show you how to download Steam. Anyway, Steam's gonna download the update to make sure it's fully up to date because the version you get from the APT package isn't actually fully up to date. And then of course it has to uncompress and install the files, so that'll take some time after it's done downloading the update. It'll actually take a pretty reasonable amount of time because it did just download nearly 300 megabytes of data, so don't expect this to be too, too fast. By the way, this will also work if you want to run other Steam games. I've used this to run Terraria in the past. Probably the most popular use of Crouton on Chromebooks is to run Minecraft, which I've also done in the past, but that's not really related to Steam. Also, there are a million tutorials on how to do it already, so why would I show you how to do it? <laughs> anyway, yeah, I guess this is the KSP programming I promised. I'll probably have Road to the Stars 8 out by the end of the week, I assume, and as I promised, I'll try to have the Gravity Assist tutorial out by the end of the month, but it's been delayed because I keep making mistakes in scripting, saying incorrect facts during the video, having some pretty embarrassing um, mispronunciation, forgetting to record, um, etc. So that's why the video is not out already, that and the fact that I keep forgetting about it. Yeah, still extracting the package. I should really just fast forward this, but I want to minimize the amount of editing because I'll be editing this on the Chromebook with OpenShot in the Crout, which can't be particularly fast, especially for the relatively large video this is going to end up being. Oh joy. <laughs> so yeah, I want to keep the amount of editing that I have to do to an absolute minimum. I basically just want to stick the files together and add a basic fade. <laughs> Maybe a thanks for watching screen too, because it's always nice to add an end screen to my videos. Okay, now it's installing. It's finally finished unpacking the files, so it shouldn't be that much longer now. Shouldn't. I don't know, it's been a while since I've gone through this process. Oh, there we go. Now it has to unpack the runtime. Um, no need to worry about this. And then I'm actually going to cut out the next part because that's going to request my login information and send me a verification code and everything. And I don't want to show that, so yeah. Okay, and we're back. If you're wondering why the time is a lot later, if you've noticed, it's because I had a couple of crashes as well as managing stuff. But anyway, here we are, and you might be tempted to click install right away. I would not recommend that unless you have like a high-end pixel book. I would recommend clicking, or right-clicking, and going to the Properties menu. Oh, let's not hide this game. Um, properties, and going to the beta programs, and going to an older version, I would recommend 0 0.3.1. And now you can 
hit install and just follow the directions. Of course, this process would be a lot faster if this weren't a Chromebook, but hey, this is a Chromebook, so you've kind of got to deal with it. Kind of the silver lining is it's going to take a lot less time to install this much, much older version, especially since it doesn't come with DLCs, since this was the version right before Making History was, was released. So, I guess that's kind of bad if you like the DLC parts or the Mission Builder or something, but at least it saves on disk space, right? See you when it's actually in the meantime while we're waiting, I'll just show you a couple of things that you might want to do. Um, I forgot the name of this package a few times, as you can tell, but uh, install CPU free utils and uh, run a command to overclock your CPU if you're comfortable with that. That's what I did. You might also want to do swap. You can do that from Chrome OS in Crosh without shell. Uh, swap enable 2048 to get 2 gigabytes of swap, which can help uh, keep Chrome, which is running in the background, from consuming too many resources. Anyway, be back. Okay, and it's just installed, so close the window and desktop shortcut it up. I prefer this to launching it directly from the Steam library window because that sometimes takes some time to actually realize that KSP has been installed. Why do you think that Steam library window? Anyway, as I warned at the beginning, don't expect this to be too fast. Don't try to use really intense system intensive mods like EVE. Maybe you can use Terrible Engineer if you want, but yeah, I wouldn't have anything against that. It uses no extra resources pretty much, but really don't be installing EVE or Interstellar Extended or Anything like that, you will regret it. Anyway, now we can just wait past the loading process. I'll not show that. All right, and loading is nearly finished. Should be on the main menu soon. Oh, there we go. Obviously, old version and the first thing to do is go to settings and turn the graphics settings to nothing. So yeah, anti-aliasing, nah. V-sync, nah. Frame limit, 60 FPS. Terrain detail, low. Render quality, fastest. Texture quality, 8th thrust. And while we're here, we might as well do some quality of life things, like turning up the conic patch limit, and turning off camera wobble, and turning on advanced tweakables. So, just apply those. Obviously, it'll take a bit of time. And in the meantime, just for your viewing pleasure, I'll make the window a little bigger. Oh, oops, right. I guess I decided to apply the settings to make the window smaller. <laughs> that happens with custom resolution settings. Oh, whoops, and it happened again. Alright, so, anyway, settings are now optimized for performance. So we'll just do a little performance demo. Obviously, you can probably expect better on almost anything, because this is already a Chromebook that has pretty poor specifications. It's six years old. So it's had plenty of time for components to deteriorate, and I have a relatively resource-hungry screen recorder running in the background, so... Yeah, don't expect great performance, but you can expect performance slightly better than this, I assume. Like I said, unless your computer is really bad. Anyway, I'll just start a sandbox save. Of course, as 
should be painfully evident by now. Things will take a while to load. <laughs> Oh, I can hear the chirping of the KSC birds, which means loading should be almost done. There we go. Nice to meet you, Jane, except that your tutorial is useless. Anyway, we can go to the vehicle assembly building. Of course, as you may have guessed, this will take some time. Might take less time in career mode since you'd have a smaller parts category to load from, at least initially, but yeah, got it, run, run, run. stuff is useless. Oh my gosh, it's the legacy uh, new Mark 1 command pod. And I'm nostalgic for even this thing. Obviously, for those who want to know about the very oldest Mark 1 command pod, you might be able to find a memorial in the space center somewhere. That's all I'm going to tell you for now. I won't always get utility and science mixed up. But I don't know why I'm building a rocket that we could have just built in career mode, in sandbox mode, but we're just going to take this parachute, strap it on, find a very simple SRB. Oh, whoops, don't scroll too far. Wait for it to bounce back. There we go. And just strap a flea to this. And then we'll just see how well flight performance works on this very cruddy hardware. I'm honestly surprised how fast it is going. Yeah, on a different Chromebook I had in the past, um, the performance was actually good enough that I could have made a video if I wanted, but... Alas, this Chromebook is a little worse than that one. Like I said, been deteriorating for six years, so... Can't expect great performance, even with some of the hacks I showed to make it a little faster. Okay, the lag is a little annoying when placing parts, I'll admit. Like I said, expect better performance than this. And check your staging. I like how the music is lag-free. Suppose if you want, you could probably delete the music files and make things a little faster, but I generally don't recommend tinkering with the game data folder <laughs> unless you know what you're doing. Flashbacks to a video I made a couple of weeks ago that was basically the result of me tinkering with game data folder. Okay, you can just about see those little planets moving on the loading bar, so we're almost ready for launch. So I've got the vessel editor music playing though. It'll probably take a bit of time to load the flight state if I had to guess. Oh, there we go, I can see the sky flashing, and here we are. Hi, Jab. I was about to say long time no see, but really it hasn't been a long time. And wait for everything to load in. Which could take a bit of time, physics simulation. You might want to change the physics delta time to make it a little bigger. Might result in some weird glitches, especially if you have a surface space or something, but it'll make the physics rendering a little simpler. Anyway, SAS on, and, well, frame rate is slow, but physics are working. Thanks for watching. Let's fire the parachute for no reason.